Hello and welcome back. Right, so we build Fab 1. So this kit is by MI. It's obviously a Japanese kit, but this has been boxed and packaged for sale to the European market. As you can see, box cover features artwork of Fab 1. And you can see Parker and Lady Penelope enjoying a lovely drive in the British countryside. Okay, and in the background you can see a stately home which might have been built with the profits of uh, sugar and slavery, but uh, the history books always gloss over those things, don't they? Now I think this kit has two versions of the box art. You've got this pink version, and there's another version with Fab 1 and Thunderbird 2, and Fab 1 in that is blue, I think. Okay, so I'll just show you the um, edges of the box. Now the other thing it mentions in here, right, is that the uh, this can be motorised with an FA130 motor, which I've seen on eBay, um, but I don't have one to hand. But it looks straightforward enough to do, to be quite honest. Now the box says it's uh, uh, 1992, which is what these seem to uh, date to. Uh, and I got this sometime between 92 and 95, so that's how long I've had this. It's been sitting in the sitting in the box in the attic all this time. Right, shall we have a look inside? So again, you can see that you get uh, multiple bags of parts. So you've got the shell of Fab One. is already a nice, um, horrendous pink colour. <laughs> Don't know of anything else that's that pink. You know, it's got a little sticker in it that shows the original manufacturer. I'll just give you a zoom up of that. Now the mould quality is quite decent. There's no flash on it or anything like that. However, it's there's not a lot of detail on it. It has to be said. Um, but it's it's all there. So at the front here, this is obviously where you'd put on your uh, grills, rocket launchers and lights, etc. And this model kit does have some ornament. As you can see, it's got some very nice bright chrome components. Um, the glazing is tinted blue. And uh, those pink things are, believe it or not, Parker and Penelope's heads. Which are um, kind of weird. So this bag contains um, where you can hang the motor into the car, put the motor into the car, they call it the gearbox and the instructions. And you've also got components there for setting up the battery tray uh, and also the tyres. So it's got some very nice soft rubber tyres which have not got funny, gone funny over time. Now this bag with the black sprue um, contains the floor pan of the car, a bit of wiring for the battery arrangements if you were to have it fitted and the remaining components, things like the rockets, um, the seats, etc. We'll get to that shortly when we're building it. Okay, the really important bit now, the instructions. Let's have a look at those. Yes, I noticed something that may be a bit obvious to you straight away, but the instructions have um, stained. You see that, so like the one half stained, the other half isn't. So that's, this has all been sealed away. So this is either the, the cardboard of the box has got acid in it, and it's kind of reacted with the paper, or the plastic of the bags as acid has reacted with the paper. So that's kind of interesting. So if you've got one of these things stored away, you might find it's actually deteriorating <laughs> inside the box. So anyway, that's the artwork that you get on the other version of the kit, which is blue, when it's in colour. As it say, pink Rolls Royce with motorised feature, motor not included, which is really contradictory. And then you've got the usual warning statements by Amarang, whoever the importer was. So there you go, so for all my international viewers, I suspect they don't exist anymore. I haven't looked it up, it wouldn't surprise me. Right, so we shall have a look and see what we've got. So as you can see, there's not actually an awful lot to this. The most complicated thing is actually doing those wheels at the front, the six wheel, the four wheel steering. 
So as you can see, you start off with assembling your missiles. And then if you've got your motor, knocking your gear on with a hammer. Now those little uh, turning axles for the wheels, you have to make sure you put the right ones on the right side because uh, there's a step in them. So basically the front two wheels touch the ground and the next two wheels don't quite. Um, so I, I presume it's just too much trouble to get four wheel steering to work properly. Um, there you go, so that's the sort of detail of it. That's actually the fiddliest whole thing to do really. The rest of it's very straightforward. Then fitting your gearbox. It might be a fun thing to do to actually put a really big motor in one of these things and just see how fast you can get it to go. That's just me being evil probably. That's the sort of thing I would have done when I was a kid. Okay, and you can see um, setting up your battery terminals. And we won't be doing this because we haven't got the motor. And your switch, etc. Which is, it's not rocket science. And then you have got two forward firing missiles. And um, I'm sorry to say they're not very good. <laughs> and that's, just, that's, that's most of the work is just putting sticking the bits of chrome on your pink. And then screwing the body to the chassis. And there's your missiles firing. So you can only fire them from below, whereas the uh, dinky Lady Penelope car, you could, I think you just press the suspension to get it to fire them. Right. So I suppose we should be making a start. Okay, so each of the two missiles has got a spring inside it, and the mechanism is a bit like the mechanism that you might have spotted before in Thunderbird 3's flame effect when you lift it off the, off the table, off the ground. Um, it kind of uses the same idea. So the spring's trapped inside these little, pist these little missiles, and they'll kind of be latched on the firing pins of the firing mechanism when, it, when you eventually get around to trying that. So basically it's just two pieces of plastic glued around a bit of spring, so we'll just put assemble those. Okay, so there's obviously a step for putting the uh, gear on the motor, if you have one. The gear comes with the kit. And so all we do here now is on the gearbox is we're going to cut two chrome wheels off the sprues and put the tyres on them. Now the tyres are very nice and soft and pliable and go on the rims really easily, so there's no need to put them in hot water or anything. It's very easy and they've quite got quite a bit of grip on them so your motorised vehicle would be able to get some good traction on them. Now the steering mechanism is quite simple and uh, the four wheels all move together as you, if you were like say to turn front two, the rear two would then move with them, except a bit like a coach, I suppose. you just got to make sure you get the, the wheels on the right sides of those particular little stub axles, so they're different lengths. Okay, so just moving on slightly, I noticed that uh, the metal pins that give you the axles, they're far too long, and they'll catch on the arches. And I wasn't going to try banging the wheels on with a hammer or something just to see if they'll go any further down. I don't think they will. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little uh, Dremel rip off to uh, cut them down a little bit. Now I don't have a vice, but I do have a pair of, well, a couple of pairs of uh, mole grips or pipe grips. Some people used to call them mole grips. I think the name's just stuck with me. Very handy if you're ever doing stuff on your car or your motorbike. <laughs> An extra pair of hands. There you go. Good sparks. Always looks quite good, doesn't it? I think it's been quite gentle with it. There we go. Now I'm only gently tapping the pin. I'm not smashing at it. It's only a little tiny toffee hopper. Anyway, so you'll see anyway that the fit is a lot better. It's much better than what it was with the original length. Now 
OK, we're going to try and assemble the steering now with our newly shortened axles. So as you can see, you've got... See, if you, I don't know if you can see that in there, but there's actually a step in the plastic. So the axle at the back is actually slightly off the ground. Oops. The trick is to get them in and snap them into the into that piece of that sort of uh, joined up steering rack thing. Okay. So this is just me doing a test fit. Okay, and you can see that <clears throat> there's like sort of little notches, so it's kind of slightly clicky when you're turning it into different positions. Uh, but there you go, so it does work. Okay, so the next thing to do is to fit the gearbox into the base plate. And you'll notice that basically you just bend the tabs over like almost like a clockwork motor or something. There's no screws on this at all. Okay, so with the tabs sticking through, we'll just bend them down with a screwdriver. It doesn't take much force to do that, so there should be no, re no reason to break anything. Here I'm just gluing in the front headlights. These are the components for the firing mechanism. They're quite crude, it has to be said. The missiles are pushed in through holes at the front of the car over these rods and held on those catches, but the rods have a lot of play in them and they're very bendy. Um, so after the first go, you might not be able to do it a second time. Right, all the bits now that go on the shell of the car are on this instruction. Now the chrome parts all should really be scraped uh, so they allow the glue to take. So I actually didn't do it properly on this one. And subsequently I used super glue to stick it on. And so I fitted the door mirror or the rear view mirrors and the bumper with good old fashioned super glue. So for the rear lights, I'm just scraping off some of the bits that's going to make the contact with the shell and that'll allow the glue to take. It's actually green plastic under the chrome. So again for the rear bumper I've scraped off some of the chrome where it won't show and that'll enable the glue to take onto the shell of the car. Now this flat piece of plastic represents the car's interior and I always think I think this is like a real missed opportunity on this car. If it had a full interior and full figures, I think it would look much better. Um, so as it is you get like a, a weird bit of Parker and nothing of Lady Penelope. That's the spirit of ecstasy which will go on the radiator. And there's the steering wheel. Now Lily Penelope's and Parker's heads um, leave a lot to be desired, if I'm honest. I think, I'll be honest, I think the uh, Dinky Fab One has got better figures. Okay, so that's what Lady Penelope and Parker look like in the car. I have to admit, she, Lady Penelope looks kind of sinister in that, actually. Um, I'll, have to, I'll have to paint them just to make them look a little bit better. Now I had thought of painting Lady Penelope's hair yellow, rather like the Fab One, but I thought I'd just try a different colour on this to make a sort of more of a sort of a less yellowy blonde.
Now, I always find painting figures very difficult, so I'm, on this I might have made Lady Penelope look like she's been out in the town and then been in a fight. <laughs> but, uh, oh well, it's, it's a bit better than the pink, I think. Pink plastic. Even though I can hear people rapidly clicking the dislike button. Okay, that's how the interior fits into the car shell. And the uh, glazing, I thought, I thought I'd filmed that, but obviously I hadn't. Uh, that's just been held on with super glue. So it doesn't leave a stain. Although, frankly, there was a little bit in the corner did stain, which I was a bit worried about. Okay, so now we basically put the top onto the bottom and it's held on with two screws. Kindly surprised, I'm going to use a screwdriver. I don't know why I'm showing that. Everyone knows we're going to use a screwdriver. I suppose it's because of my age, but um, whenever I see anything speeded up, I always think of uh, the Benny Hill tune. But uh, there you go, that's childhood trauma for you, I suppose. Right, so that's basically what the completed car looks like. Um, it's very pink. The chrome is very shiny. Chrome works very nice, it has to be said. Um, weirdly, it doesn't steer too well. I think it's because it's so light. Um, although it might do better on carpets or something. When that motor's going, so as you can see, um, quite you know the bumpers are quite nice and shiny, but it's not terribly detailed if I'm honest. So the big question is, how does this compare? These are rockets at the front. How does this compare to the Dinky version? Now, the Dinky version, it has to be said, it's got a forward-firing missile. I haven't got the missiles for this, sadly. And it's got rear firing missiles and it's got quite a decent interior on it and I think um, I think it's still it's still the Queen or the King depending on how you look at it there you go so that's where you put your rocket in on the dinky one I think you just fire it by pressing down if I remember right and the same with the rear ones And also with the dinky one as well, you can open the canopy, uh, or the roof, whatever you like to call it. So there you go, you get a nice look at Parker. And the interior is silver, which I've forgotten actually, I haven't looked at this car in years. Because again, it's uh, in storage. There you go, Fab 1, Lady Penelope, dinky 100, I think. There you go. This is all silver, so you've got full figures. So, definitely Parker. And that's... Definitely Lady Penelope. Right, well, if you've liked what you've seen, give us a like. Give us a comment, by all means, if you remember a Thunderbirds, Lady Penelope. Um, and uh, by all means, subscribe so you get a little notification when the new video comes along. Um, and thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you soon. Okay, bye.